Now, from WYDC-TV, this is Big Fox News at 10. Good evening, I'm Anna Manuel. The Steuben County Legislature recently approved a plan to pay stipends to volunteers in emergency medical services. Our Sonia Ellison joins us now with details on the payments and how leaders hope this will lead to an increase in volunteers. The plan that was approved by Steuben County lawmakers will pay stipends to volunteers in emergency medical services to encourage more volunteers to enroll in training. I think it's a, it's a decent idea. Volunteers in Steuben County will now receive a $400 stipend upon completing their EMT recertification. The requirements are to the point where somebody who volunteers has a job uh, uh, children, a life basically, um, sometimes it's a little difficult to get that done. There's been a shortage of emergency services in recent years. Jobs, um, people having to work multiple jobs to make ends meet, um, a, lot of, a lot of challenges. The county says the new $400 stipend is just one incentive for volunteers. So if somebody wants to take their original EMT who's a volunteer with one of the agencies, they can get $1,800 upon passing the uh, state exam. These stipends expected at the beginning of 2024 could also offset the expensive price of EMT recertifications, which are required every three years. It's tough. It's tough. Uh, this, might, this might help with some of the costs of the class. Depending upon where you are, uh, there's a lot of the classes that are very, very expensive. Fred Grams manages at Wayland Spring Water EMS and says this could help with the turnover rate of the volunteers he has. And hopefully uh, we start bringing back the volunteers and then we could be a pipeline for the paid agencies. Hammondsport volunteer Chris Jenkins thinks this is a good step forward. Um, I think there should be some other things that we should do to help get people in into EMS. As the shortage of emergency services continues, volunteers and agencies are doing what they can to serve the Steuben County area and beyond. This is a good step, but you got to go one step at a time. Sonia Ellison, Big Fox News, Steuben County. An Elmira teen is arrested and charged with attempted murder after police say he stabbed his parents. Elmira police say 18-year-old Jacob Olson stabbed his parents in their car. Elmira PD says the victims escaped from him and were helped by neighbors across the street. Police arrested Olson after he gave himself up voluntarily at the scene of the crime. Both victims were taken to the hospital and one is stable, the other sustained critical injuries. Election day wrapped up yesterday, so let's take a look at some of the results. Elmira Mayor Dan Mandel was re-elected, winning his third term over challenger Jim Hassel. Shimon County voted yes on Proposal 1. That's an amendment removing small city school districts from a special constitutional debt limitation. In Steuben County, there were two winners for the state Supreme Court Justice for the 7th Judicial District, Alex R. Renzi and Joe Waldorf. In Bath's 3rd District County Legislature race, Nicholas Pelham won over Dean Rawley. And Joshua Buck won the Bath Town Supervisor race, while Jennifer Young won Corning's Supervisor race. The U.S. House formally rebuking Representative Rashida Tlaib over her remarks on the Israel-Hamas war. Matt Finn has more on the move to censure. On this vote, the yeas are 234 and the nays are 188. The House of Representatives voting to censure the only Palestinian American in Congress, Rashida Tlaib. 22 Democrats joined the Republicans in favor, while four Republicans crossed the aisle to join the Democrats in voting against it. Four members voted present. Congresswoman Tlaib becomes the 26th member censured in House history. The Michigan Congresswoman has been fiercely criticized for defending an anti-Israel chant and spreading misinformation on the Israel-Hamas war. GOP lawmakers pushed to discipline Congresswoman Tlaib, saying she must be held accountable for her controversial comments. For simply firmly and formally disagreeing with her and chastising her for her words and her actions. The vote followed a fiery and emotional debate on the House floor on Tuesday. When she chants from the river to the sea, she believes it. She believes Israel should be eradicated. 
because otherwise you would never, ever repeat that vile, vile statement. She does not want to kill Jews. She is not in support of Hamas. While some Democrats came to Tlaib's defense, others see voting against punishing her as voting against Israel. In Congress, censures hold no actual reprimands. Instead, they're more of a symbolic mark of disapproval on a lawmaker. Matt Finn, Fox News. Billions of dollars are on the line for President Biden's supplemental security funding request. And now the head of the Department of Homeland Security is working to convince lawmakers that the department will use that money effectively to address the border crisis. Madeline Rivera has more from Washington. Do you, as a resident of St. Chicago, believe that we should remain in a sanctuary city? It's a Chaos erupted at Chicago City Hall Tuesday as leaders there scramble to find a way to handle the influx of migrants. Please come to order. Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas is in the hot seat on Capitol Hill, where lawmakers are also searching for answers to the border crisis. Solutions. The border is an open bleeding wound. Mayorkas is defending the White House's request for roughly $14 billion for border protection. It's part of the nearly $106 billion in supplemental funding that President Biden had asked Congress for last month. And it also includes aid for Israel and Ukraine. Ensuring the safety and security of the American people must be more than just a talking point. Earlier this week, a group of Senate Republicans proposed solutions to the southern border that would in part resume construction of a border wall and implement asylum reform. Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell, who is sympathetic to the Biden administration's broad approach to the supplemental funding request, says more border enforcement is the only way to get the package across the finish line. We have to have a credible solution to the wide open border. The Senate Republican border proposal is already facing pushback from some Democrats, including Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer, who called it a total non-starter. In Washington, Martha Rivera, Fox News. Pennsylvania towns dominate a new list of the best places to retire in the country. The U.S. News and World Report released the poll. Seven of the top 10 cities are located in Pennsylvania, including all of the top five. Harrisburg took the top spot with Reading, Lancaster, Scranton, Allentown, York, and Pittsburgh all making the list. The list factored in six different quality of life factors in deciding the cities, with affordability being the most important factor. Steuben County Courthouse is lit up in green this week as part of the Operation Green Light campaign honoring area veterans. Operation Green Light was launched in New York State 2021 as a way to honor veterans. Residents have changed their bulbs to green on their patios and by their doors to help shine a light of appreciation for veterans. Steuben County has the second largest number of veterans per capita in the state. Your midweek forecast is next. Now, your Twin Tiers forecast from Big Fox. Well, good evening. Some showers are pushing in as we stepped into the evening hours, and there was some concern of some areas of some freezing rain, especially through those higher elevations as temperatures were just near that freezing mark, but they're actually warming now as what well is triggering these showers is a warm front lifting in. We can even see overnight we have more of that southerly wind, 10 to 20 miles per hour, so even a bit gusty, bringing us warming in from those 30s into those mid 40s to start off the day. Now, what we'll see is that it is a bit blustery as that system moves in as well here from 2 a.m even through much of our Thursday, we're going to have that southerly wind gust getting upwards of 20 to 30 miles per hour. Now those showers are going to dissipate, but the wind's going to stick around as well as that cloud cover. We're going to see that we're going to battle clouds potentially all the way through the weekend. Now, as mentioned, it's going to be breezy at times. We'll see that it's not going to be as gusty, but we're at least going to keep a stronger wind and a variable wind through Saturday that by Saturday morning is going to bring some cooling into the weekend. But we are going to talk about some returning sunshine next week, and that's going to bring us some returning warmth as well. Now, as we step our way here into our Thursday, we'll start off with at least some showers around. We'll keep a chance through the early afternoon, but it is expected to be very light accumulation staying under a tenth of an inch, few hundredths of an inch. But what we're noting is that we talked about that southerly wind being a bit gusty. It is quickly launching those temperatures near the 60s, and we'll have a chance to see some sunshine by the end of the day as well, which that will only promote some slight warming in place. But it is going to be just peaks of sunshine is what we're going to see 
see is that the active weather pattern is going to stay in place in a lingering low across the Great Lakes. But it keeps us across much of Pennsylvania into southern New York underneath this very strong southerly flow that continues to promote those temperatures to even stay mild. So even with some scattered showers and cloudy skies, we bring those temperatures about 10 degrees above normal for this time of the year. And that is area wide. We see all the way through those Finger Lakes getting into those mid 50s to low 60s. Mansfield there 56 degrees, Corning 61, Bath about 57 degrees. Now as we head into Friday, what we'll note is that we'll continue with sometimes some cloud cover, that, but that's going to keep temperatures mild in a sense overnight. Not as cool as 31, but holding on to those upper 30s. Now we'll battle some areas of some cloud cover, might be able to again work into some sunshine, but what we'll see is that temperature is not as warm because we're not going to have as strong of southerly winds pushing the warmth in, but what we'll see is that we're still going to stay near normal. However, what we're seeing is that we talked about a warm front lifting in tonight. Following a warm front typically comes a cold front, and that's going to arrive Friday night into Saturday. So we see those winds go from westerly winds to more of a northwesterly wind. A little gusty into the morning, not too bad, not as strong as what we're seeing right now, but it is going to be enough to pull those temperatures back as we will be into those 40s throughout the weekend. We'll see some gradual clearing, some sunshine promised, and then we're going to work into a settled weather pattern. What we'll see into next week is that a very dominant high pressure system is going to be placed across the central portions of the United States, and that's going to edge towards our area, which will promote more sunshine as well as some warming temperatures.